It's our boy of sports, man. It's Lamont. We back. It's time to just bid our farewells uh, to the 90s today. And we got an entire sermon for you guys, man. Uh, you know, as we always do, man, we always teach. Um, and we want to leave you guys with, you know, uh, um, especially the JDRs. We want to bid them a farewell, but we want to leave them on a good note. And at least just let the JDRs know there's no hard feelings. It's no hard feelings, 90s fans. Let's let's let let let's let Patty LaBelle talk to you for a little bit. So brothers and sisters, we gather today, this glorious Saturday night, not under the steeple of a grand cathedral, but in the sanctuary of our shared love for the game of basketball. We are here to embark on a journey of of truth, a pilgrimage of revelation as we lay to rest the myths of a bygone era, the 1990s basketball era. And, you know, as we, as we open our hearts to this sermon, you guys, let us let us remember some words because like i said you guys man this is gonna be an educational piece and we're gonna let them and we're gonna we're gonna allow them to leave with like i said some warm words and, and what other place can we find those warm words other than the bible right so let us remember the words you guys of the gospel According to John, John chapter eight, verse 32, you guys, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free today. Today, you guys, we seek the, the liberation that comes from confronting the, the legends and tales that have long shaped our views of the court's past heroes. Now, what are those tales? When we talk about tall tales, when we talk about the lies, we, I have a guest, I have a guest speaker here that's gonna talk to you guys about some of these lies. And he's gonna also help me really break down some of the things that we've seen over the past couple of years here on FYF Sports. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black. It's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure. High and I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out. Yes, I'm black. I'm proud of it. I'm black and beautiful. Dr. King, you guys, profound wisdom reminds us of the falsehoods. Okay. And we've heard a lot of falsehoods, you guys. No matter how grand, we've heard a lot of grandeur when we people talk about the 90s. And there's still a few people out there still holding on, still trying to push that grandeur, right? People like Chilltown, he's going to have to just let it go, right? It cannot stand in the light of truth. 
And as we turn our gaze towards the 90s, you guys, a time heralded by many as the golden age of basketball. This is one of the biggest lies that they propagated. A time of legends, of giants who walk the earth. This is how they try to describe the 90s. But yet, as we peel back the layers of nostalgia, what did we find? And, and what, what did many of you guys find when in the We Done With The 90s trend on TikTok? A lot of you guys found the truth, man. Let me take you guys, before we get to our choir today, all right, before we get to our choir today, um, let me break down one more scripture for you guys. And I can't put this one on the screen, but, you know, the scriptures, when it talks about this, the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Today, you guys, according to the scriptures, technology and the diligence of the faithful have brought the light of the full games of the 90s, revealing not titans clashing in battle, but just mere mortals flawed and bound by the limits of their time. This is what we've found when we've watched the Ninos. Let me say that one more time for the people that missed it. Today's technology and the diligence of the faithful have brought to light the full games, the games that we can find on YouTube of the 90s, revealing not titans clashing in battle, but mortals flawed by the boundaries and by limitations of their own time. This is what we're finding when we go back and watch the 90s. Remember, they told us, go back and watch. They, they didn't think we could actually go find the tapes. They thought we would just go look at the highlights, but we went back and we watched. And what did we find? We found the truth. So when we talk about Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, names that echo through the Hall of Fame, Yet even they were not beyond the reach of human frailty. And we saw that in the We Hate and, and We Done With The 90s trend. Right? There were clips circulating. And all these clips that circulated, they showed struggling moments, low basketball IQ. And it was just a reminder that even the mightiest falter. And we saw that. Jordan couldn't go left. Isaiah Thomas has been telling us this for years. Jordan couldn't go left. He told us this for years and we didn't listen. But ultimately, the we done with the 90s trend happened and we started seeing the full games, right? Before we continue, you guys, right? And then we got a beautiful choir for you guys today that we're going to get to. Before we continue, let us reflect again on the words of Dr. King a man who reminded us of the importance of seeing things as they are. How to farm, not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming, not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms, not only that, Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is the reality. Now, when we come to Washington... And he is right. This is what we're faced with. This is exactly what we are faced with, man. So... As we get to the first, just, just a little small break in the sermon, right? As Sister Shirley Caesar's voice lifts us up, let it remind us that we are sweeping through the city of our memories, you guys, cleansing the streets of exaggeration and myth. We are cleansing that today. 
We honor the past not by idolizing it like the JDRs and the 90s fans, but by understanding it in its beauty and its blemishes. I know a lot of these words is hidden home for a lot of the Jordan fans. But, you know, again, now is a great time, man. If you're a Jordan Re fan to just go ahead and repent a little bit, man. Let it go. This is a great time to do that. And salute to Sister Shirley Caesar leading off the choir today. I think she's doing a, a great job. Round of applause to Sister Shirley right there. Great. The choir is in the building today. Now, what has been the impact, you guys? Salute to Gix. Salute to Pootie. Salute to everybody that's pulled up today. Thank you, Chris Turner. Just peacefully putting them to bed, man. You know, that's all it is. So, Second part is, you know, what is the impact of the nostalgia? And we're going to add everybody in at the end of the sermon. You guys, we're going to get you guys up here. So just hold tight. But we got to disseminate this message. But as we've as we've already done before, you guys. We're going to take it to scripture, right? We're going to let them down very easily with. Scripture. When we go to Ecclesiastics 710, do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Let's read Ecclesiastics 710 one more time, you guys. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. What does that mean to the Jordan fans and the JDRs? Nostalgia, while it can be comforting, often colors our perceptions, especially perceptions of the past, obscuring the truth and hindering our appreciation for the present and the future. And that's what we've seen happen with JDRs. What did we have in our history that was comparable to the nostalgia that we see JDRs have for Michael Jordan? We can take it back to Dr. King, who has been advising us very wisely on these matters, he's going to remind us of a time where when this emotional energy enrages you from the inside, some of the things it will manipulate you to do. And what's the only other moment in human history where people were so disillusioned? Let's let's let Dr. King talk to us. That racism is still alive in American society and much more widespread than we realize. And we must see racism for what it is. It is a myth of the superior and the inferior race. It is the false and tragic notion that one particular group, one particular race is responsible for all of the progress, all of the insight and the total flow of history. And the theory that another group or another race 
is totally depraved, innately impure, and innately inferior. And in the final analysis, racism is evil because this, its ultimate logic is genocide. Hmm. Dr. King's, you guys, words pierce the veil of time, reminding us that just as we must confront the shadows of our society, we must also face the illusions of our nostalgia. It blinds us. Beloved blinds us to the evolution of the game and to the talents that have risen since. It teaches us to confront uncomfortable truths. Similarly, we must confront the nostalgia that distorts our past. And that's what we have done today. So just as Dr. King called us to acknowledge the pervasive shadows of society, we too must now recognize you guys how nostalgia shadows our understanding of basketball evolution. We have to start recognizing this, right? And as we start to kind of ponder, as we start to ponder that, Chester Baldwin is going to lead us off in song so that the JDRs can ponder this, but not just ponder in silence, but you can ponder to the tunes of some glorious music. Grandmother's house. It made me sit forward. Mama is what we called her. And I can remember on Sunday mornings, if you were in Mama's house, you had to get up for Sunday morning prayer. And come to think of it, if you in my mama's house, today on Sunday morning, you got to get up for Sunday morning prayer. And my grandmother knew how to pray. But she had a lot of grandsons. And oftentimes she couldn't think about names and sometimes she would just call us all Bubba. And I got some of my first cousins in here and my brothers in here with us today. But it was some of I need you guys to let Brother Chester's hymn carry us. For in the prayers of our forebears, we find the strength to comfort, the myths to embrace the full spectrum of basketball's history from the peach baskets of its inception to the high flying acrobatics of today's athletes. That's brother Chester Baldwin came in to support some of the JDRs that are struggling and grappling with this change in basketball history. And just like brother Chester Baldwin, um, that's what we're here to do today as well here on FYF Sports. That's what we're here to do as well. So as we kind of transition, right, this sermon, right, we start have to we have to start thinking about moving beyond. All right. 
And as we've throughout this whole sermon, as we've always turned to you guys, what what have we consistently turned to for the best advice moving forward? Let's show you guys Philippians 313, man. And if you have your Bible, I want you to open it up and follow along. But one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Philippians 313. Let's read it again. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Let the scripture guide us as we endeavor to build on the foundation of truth, appreciating the past while eagerly anticipating the future's potential. Some of the things, these, these things should be in your life's blueprint. If you are an avid JDR and you're struggling and you're grappling with this new realization, right? Again, some of the things, some of these things should be in your life's blueprint. Remember, Dr. King once said, urging us to construct a life of purpose towards the truth. Let's hear from, from him one more time. Some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one, don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, you must have, as a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Finally, in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal star, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. JDR, you got to keep moving. Jordan fans, 90s fans. Just like he said, by, by all means, you got to keep moving. A lot of you guys have been stuck in the 90s. And you have failed to keep moving. Is now it's time to keep moving. So, in our life's blueprint for basketball appreciation, let us include a foundation of truth, not myths. Let us build on what is real, not what we wish to be true. JDRs, a lot of the things that you said about the 90s, you wished to be true. And so we must ask ourselves, what lies in our life's blueprint? As Dr. King so eloquently questioned, do we cling to the myths of the 90s or do we build on a foundation of truth, recognizing the error for what it was in a chapter in the ongoing saga of basketball? This is not its pinnacle. 90s fans, you guys, try to trick a lot of people into believing that the 90s was the pinnacle and it's not basketball is an ongoing saga and so once again you guys man i think the choir today has done a beautiful job of helping ease the pain um of of of, of the jdrs and and that's what we're here to do and i think one of the best ways to kind of soothe the the pain and agony that they're dealing with, especially the agony that they were faced with when the we done with the '90s trend went viral. Um, 
amazing grace is usually the best way to soothe those pains. Right? Brother Al Green, he's going to remind us of this. Now, Brother Al Green's amazing grace, y'all, reminds us of the grace we must have when confronting the past, allowing us to separate, but not separate, but also appreciate the journey of basketball from its humble beginnings to its current glory. There's a there's a 90s fan next to you. Just put your arm around him and comfort him as he deals with a significant loss of basketball history. Salute to salute to the Al Green for coming through blessing us with amazing grace. And that's what we got to have when we're dealing with these 90s fans. We have to address them with grace. I feel like in the past we've addressed them a little bit too harshly and they haven't taken our words to heart because we kind of attacked them ferociously. And so this is one of the reasons why, as we conclude the sermon today, we need to give the 90s a thankful farewell, right? We need to give them a thankful farewell and according to the scriptures. How do we do that, right? How do we bid them a thankful farewell when they've been so nasty, right? When they've been so vile. If you have your Bible with you, I want everybody to turn to Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Remember, we talk about how vile they've been, the lies that they perpetuated. Just recently, listen to the lies that you hear from the people about today's greatest players. Off the court, on the court, you hear the lies. But what does it say in Thessalonians 5.18? Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As we bid a farewell to the myths of the 90s, let us do so with thankful hearts, cherishing the era's contributions while recognizing the need to move forward. And that's what we got to do here. So, as we close, what better way to close, right, than to just kind of reflect on some things. So as we close, let us not forget the 90s. That has to be key in this. Let us remember it accurately, not as how JDRs have explained it, not how Jordan fans have tried to explain it. Let us remember it accurately, free from the distortions of nostalgia. It gave us much, yes, but it has come and it has gone. And we look to the future with very clear eyes, but full hearts. 
Dr. King once spoke of the fatigue because I know many of you guys, young Africa, a lot of you guys, Herm, you guys are dealing with a lot of mental fatigue, dealing with these JDRs. I mean, we've seen this fatigue. It's ran people like LVZ away from the basketball circuit. He no longer wants to be a part because of the JDRs. So Dr. King once spoke of the fatigue that comes from a journey, a long journey towards justice. As we lay the myths to rest, let us listen to his words one last time. I'm tired of marching. I'm tired of marching for something that should have been mine at first. I don't mind saying to you tonight. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of the tension surrounding our days. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of living every day under the threat of death. I have no modern complex. I want to live as long as anybody in this building tonight. And sometimes I begin to doubt whether I'm going to make it through. I must confess I'm tired. We got to confess, man, we have become tired. A lot, a lot of us have given up hope. A lot of us stopped fighting the fight. A lot of us start, stopped pushing the facts because a lot of you guys gave up. But I want you to remember in Dr. King's weariness, we find our mandate here in these basketball circles to march for what should have been ours at birth. The knowledge of the 90s should have been ours at birth. But to march forward with the legacy of the past guiding us, not defining us. With Dr. King's word guiding us, let us march forward, not in the service of myths, but in the pursuit of richer and more inclusive and a very a much more inclusive understanding of the game of basketball is history and its future and as we close let our brother john p key close us out in song As we partake in the sweet melody of Brother John P. Key, let the lily in the valley be a symbol of rebirth, of growth from fertile soil of truth. That's what we're giving you here at FYF Sports. The 90s have given us so much, but now... We step into the future. Our spirits unburdened by myths. Our hearts open to the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Right. As I drop the link for you guys to pull up. I want I, I want you guys to go forth. My beloved in peace and in truth. Amen.
Dazzling, my Lord, is in the valley, and that's bright as the morning star. I'm really it's in the valley. Hallelujah. 